Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. So today I'm going to talk to you about bowing smoothly and how to bow smoothly and how to get those really smooth bow transitions. Before I go any further, I just want to um, do a little bit of housekeeping and just, just let you know that I do have a 1 to 30 violin course. I'll have a link coming up in a card. I always forget which corner it is, this one or this one, but I'll have a little card coming up um, with a video about that. But I have written a book series with 30 violin lessons and they come with interactive videos as well. So my course is a very traditional course. It will take you from a complete absolute beginner, you know nothing about nothing about the violin, to a very accomplished, decent, intermediate violin player. And as I say, I'm a classically trained violinist. So I suppose I teach more of the traditional method, but there is nothing like my course anywhere on the internet. Nobody has done anything like this similarly. And this is, those lessons are just mainly the, what, 20 years of experience of, of teaching students here at my home over the years. Um, you know, and, and just just my, my my years of just musical experience, really, and, and teaching. And what I've done is just put my teaching method into a book made the interactive videos that go along with it and you know made them all available to you guys on the internet and it is a 100 percent downloadable course so the second you 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 pay um you can don't you get access to download the books and you can kick off immediately so i will put a link to that as well but it's a one to thirty violin course takes you from guarantees to take you from i know that's a bold statement but i absolutely stand by that it guarantees to take you from a complete beginner to a, a, a very decent, accomplished, intermediate violin player. And the other thing I wanted to talk to you about as well is, did you know I have a Patreon page? I don't think a lot of you know that I have a Patreon page. I always have like little tags coming up at the beginning of the video, but I don't really think, you know, I don't think people kind of put two and two together with that. So I do have a Patreon page um, that has been going now for, oh, a good, maybe, maybe a good three, three and a bit years now. Um, and on there I, I post, um, I make arrangements of violin sheet music. There is a little bit of piano sheet music on there as well. There is some blogs on there that I've written about various things that accompany videos. All of the content that is on my Patreon page is exclusive to Patreon. Whatever you see on Patreon is not anywhere else. I just want to make that clear. So for those of you that are pledging on Patreon, you can rest assured that this information isn't just kind of floating about the internet somewhere. Whatever goes on Patreon, Patreon stays on Patreon. I have a back catalogue there of, last time I checked just this morning, of about 800 pieces of violin music for you to instantly kind of get your hands on and download. There's some backing tracks on there as well, so I do upload quite a few backing tracks that accompany the sheet music as well if you if you want those. So depending on how much you pledge per month will depend on what, what benefits you get. But if you check it out, I'll put a link to my Patreon underneath as well. But I just thought that it might be interesting for you to know that I had a Patreon page as well. So a lot of people when they bow, they don't really kind of notice it. But it's the transition of the bow when it goes from up to down bow that really kind of gives away the fact that you're more of a beginner violinist. So the difference between being a beginner violinist and a professional violinist is is mostly gonna be the, the, the bow transition. So what I mean by that is that when people are bowing from an up to down, it's more like that. So you've got that kind of harsh stop at the end. No sound, no sound, no sound. Do you see what I mean? So. Yeah, I don't know if you can kind of hear what I mean there, but you, you're getting that harsh attack before you're going, before you're changing direction of the bow. Almost like a... And that is gonna give away the difference between you being kind of a new player or an amateur player and the difference between how professionals play. Now, how professionals play is that they join those bows up. So actually, you're not really gonna be able to tell when they're playing an up bow and when they're playing a down bow. Obviously, you can hear the, note, the notes are, are changing, but you never hear that degree of separation between the notes because they gel them together. And I'm gonna show you exactly how they do that. So the difference between someone beginning would play would be sounding something like this. 
just each note sounds separate. How a more of a professional would play. <laughs> So my bow actually never kind of stops. And that's all because of what I'm doing here with the fingers. So this is a little bit more of an advanced technique. So I wouldn't recommend someone who's only been playing five minutes to, to do this. This is definitely an, an advanced technique. And if you haven't been playing for very long, then you are gonna find this quite difficult. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying don't, but I will just say that because you don't have the kind of dexterity and you know the length of playing time that it's you you are going to find this a little bit harder to do. So I'm just putting it out there. But you know you're you're obviously free and welcome to to have a go and have a dabble with it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. So what happens is is that it's all in the wrist and it's all in the transition of the fingers that take the bow from being an up bow to a down bow. So if I maybe just position myself this way so that you can see. I know I'm not using full bows because I think I'm just gonna be off camera. Um, but what's happening here is that it's all in the fingers. Now, the exercise for you to do this with, and this is a very difficult one, is by doing this. So this is actually very hard to do. When I first started doing this, I could not get the hang of it. I was dropping the bow everywhere. But basically what you wanna do is have your, your bow grip, as you do. Obviously you've gotta make sure that your bow grip is correct. That thumb must always be bent. If your thumb is not bent, make sure that your thumb is bent and don't even attempt this until your thumb is bent as standard. Then what you wanna do is just simply bring the fingers into the palm of your hand, like that. I'm just trying to show you at all angles so you can see what I mean. So you're bringing, pushing the bow out and bringing it in to the palm of your hand. If you can see what I'm doing here. And that is going to help your fingers move. So if you do that, you might just find that you'll just need to reposition your grip a little bit. But that's what you need to be able to do because that is going to be pretty much the movement that you're going to be doing this one here. Okay. So what actually you can do is try it with a pen or a pencil first. So this is a pencil. So you can try it with a pencil. So the pencil's just actually not gonna be quite so quite so heavy, isn't it? So you can just kind of, you know, you can just be at work or be at your desk or whatever, and you can kind of be doing that in a way. It's, but essentially it is just, it is just doing that. And that's easy to do that, but it's not so easy to do when A, you're holding an object in your hand. It's hard enough to sort of just do it like that. But B, when you've actually got your, your bow grip. But you can try a pencil. A pencil is, you know, is, is better than nothing, but you know, you can just sort of be sitting there randomly out and about doing whatever it is you're doing at home. And you can just sort of be practicing and doing that with a pencil. And then when obviously you get the bow, the bow is a lot easier, I, I will admit, just, I think, just because of the, the, the kind of the weight of it. It's easier if you have the bow up um, vertically as opposed to horizontally, because then you've got the weight of it kind of here that's, that's hard. But that is the movement that you wanna be doing on your fingers. The next thing that you want to be doing is bowing on that. Now, what you wanna do is place the bow right at the heel, and all you want to be able to do is just shoot your fingers up and down, so. So that's it. So you're right at the heel. So basically your bow is going to be sitting more or less where your where your index finger is. And all you want to do is just be kind of pulling your fingers towards you, pushing them out again towards you. And it's kind of, if you pull your hand in your fingers towards you, the bow is going to go up. And if you pull your fingers down, the bow is going to go down. But it doesn't actually matter which which way you go if, if you're it doesn't matter whether you're you're pushing and pulling your fingers up and the bow is going down or your your the bow is going down, your fingers go. It doesn't really it doesn't really matter. Don't get bogged down with with that. That is not the point of the exercise. 
The also not the point of the exercise is the sound that you're making. We don't care about the sound we're making, making. that is completely irrelevant. The whole point of this exercise is to get these fingers moving one way or another. I wanna be clear, this is not a bow technique. This is not anything like cold bowing that we're doing here. This is just my, my bowing technique that I teach to my students to get them to get that nice flowing kind of um, bow and finger movement. So this is something that I've just kind of um, you know, not necessarily made up myself, but this is just my teaching technique and my teaching method that I, I, I give out to my students. So again, we're not worried about the sound that the bow is making. We're not worried about whether the bow is pulling up and down and the fingers are going up and put. That's not really the point. The point is, is that we want to be pulling the fingers in and pushing the fingers out and the bow is just moving. <coughs> So generally when we want to be put, when we want to be going down, the fingers want to be extended. And then when we're going up, the fingers are kind of that that bow is in. Do you remember when we did that? When we were doing that? So that's down, up, down, up. So if you put the bow just slightly in front of where the index finger is, maybe not quite on the index finger, because I think you'll probably run out of bow, but just sort of maybe a half an inch from the index finger. Um, and then you want to start bowing down. You can start down or up, it doesn't really matter. If I start down and extend, up, fingers come in. Down, extend, up, fingers come in. So you might have to readjust your grip every now and then. So you're not actually moving the bow. Do not move the bow. The bow shouldn't actually be moving. Once the bow is there, the bow stays there. So we're not aiming to be sort of actually moving the bow. That's why we're only getting a very short. That's why we're only getting a very short sound because it is all in the hand. So you can see that nothing is moving. My hand hasn't actually moved from that position and I'm, I'm not moving. So that will take quite some getting used to actually. So first of all, we've, we've done this. You've got to be able to do this. This is step one. If you don't do this, then you won't know what the movement is on here. Once you've nailed step one, step two is to then put that into practice there. Step three would be then to put that into practice with our full bow. So what we're going to do now is that when we're, let's start up, where we're going to do our down bow. Our fingers are extending out. So then when we get to the bottom, our fingers are going to be gradually coming in closer. So as you can see, they're gradually coming in closer now. Then you can see in slow motion, my fingers are coming in. Remember when we were doing this, my fingers are now coming in really close. And then I start to extend them as I'm going down the other way. So I think what I might do is see if, I don't know if this is gonna come out or not, but I'm gonna do some bows and I'm gonna see if I can slow it down in slow motion for you so you can kind of um, catch what's happening. This is just very difficult for me to kind of do it in slow motion for you, but the movement is kind of that. So as you're coming up, you wanna be bringing those fingers in and then as you're going down, you're pushing those fingers out. So it is that movement that we were doing here. So it's not gonna be quite so sharp because you're changing the direction of the bow. But the difference between that and not doing that is that, you know, when students get to the top, nothing happens here. They just keep their hand there, you know, and they wonder why they don't get that kind of smooth transition. But. that's what you should be doing there. So I'm gonna see if I can slow that down and I will apologize in advance if you see some very <laughs> very, very weird looks on my face because I'm slowing it down. So I'm gonna try, try not to look stupid while I'm doing this, but you get what I mean. So I'm just gonna do some bows, slow it down at the top so you can kind of see what that looks like.
So that is going to help you how to bow smoothly and bowing smoothly is all about your transitions. So don't forget that step one, you wanna be trying it with the bow first. You can try it with a pencil if you want to. Try it with a bow first. Step two, you're just gonna be doing that, that little thing just on the violin there. You're not worried about the sound particularly. Um, try not to move the bow, but you just want to be able to get that that we did in the air just with the bow. We wanna put that in action onto the strings as well. And then the third step would be to actually put that in action when you're, when you're going up and down. It's not really so much when you're going down this way because it's easy the hand is is much easier for the hand to move going up that way because you've got a lot more room to do that so that's not quite so so hard to do when the bow is down here and then you're bowing up from there so do you see what i mean if you're here and you're bowing up this way because of the because of the the direction of the arm you've got the kind of the, the, the push and pull uh from just just from the natural force of the arm there. So that isn't actually difficult to do, but it's this one. It's this one when the bow is up here. And when people are not moving, they're not doing anything here, you're gonna get that duh, duh, duh. You're gonna get that kind of jolt in between. And it's how you, you keep that quite nice and smooth. As I demonstrated, you can kind of hear the difference. And it's all because your fingers are pushing out, up and in, and then they're kind of pushing away and that's going to give you that smooth transition if nothing is happening up here with the bow then the bow is just gonna the, the bow is just gonna jolt so it's almost just just like you know you're reaching the end of something and instead of just kind of smoothly buffering that out and then coming back again you're just trying to you're just sort of getting to the end of something stopping turning around and then coming back again you know, so it's about making that smooth and rounded tra transition from going up and going down. And it is all in the bow. But as I said earlier, um, it is quite an advanced technique. So if you haven't been playing the violin very long, um, I'm not saying don't do this. It's all these things are kind of good, kind of good to do. But it isn't something that I would introduce to an, a new player because I think they are far more important things that one needs to be learning about before you start learning about this kind of thing. But, you know, if you've been playing for a little while and you want to take your violin playing to kind of the next level, or if you're thinking to yourself, you know, um, what is it about my playing that I can't put my finger on? You know, something about it that's just not kind of sounding professional enough. That is gonna be part of the reason of why it's not sounding professional. In fact, it's probably gonna be about a good 60% of why your violin playing is kind of lacking over a more professional kind of performance, you know, because you're hearing those gaps and those breaks in between the bow. And that that makes such a difference. So this this really can kind of improve your your level of playing and taking you into that next that next category. That really kind of it, it brings up to that next level by a good sixty percent. I would I would say the other forty percent is going to be more about interpretation and lots of other things as well. But the 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 bowing is 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 a big one. So if you guys can nail that, then that's I, I can guarantee that's going to take your violin playing to the next level. Don't forget to check out my one to thirty violin lesson. It really is um, a, a really really good course, and I know <laughs> I know I'm plugging it a bit, um, but you know I'm I'm really proud of that course. You can just check out the reviews on my website as well and see what other people are saying about it. If you've bought the course or you've bought some of my books from that course, then please do leave a comment underneath this video, um, you know, giving me your feedback and others can read that as well. But it is a really, really good course and it does take you from a complete beginner to a very decent accomplished intermediate. And also don't forget to check out my Patreon page as well, where I'm always putting um, sheet music arranged for violin. As I said, there's nearly 800 pieces of sheet music there depending on how much you pledge per month will depend on what benefits um, that, that, that you get from my patreon page and i will leave all the links to, the, to everything underneath this video so thank you very much for watching and i will see you in my next video bye